At present, money is created not for the benefit of society, but for the profit of private banks. Banks like to create enormous amounts of money from our debt because the more we borrow into existence, the more interest the bank gets to collect and the richer the bank becomes. In the process, the banks gain more control over everyone, individuals, industry, and government alike. Abundant money too often leads to speculative asset bubbles that make insiders rich. But, as we have witnessed, these bubbles inevitably burst under the unbearable weight of ever-increasing interest demands. The losers are many, including governments. Already burdened with huge debt and shrinking revenues, governments are forced to add trillions to that debt in order to rescue the banks that are the cause of the problem. Otherwise, we would have no money system. It's an absurd situation, and a tragic one, considering that government could instead create the money itself and spend it interest-free on infrastructure, education, or universal health care. And most of that debt-free money would enter the economy as wages, circulating through all levels of society for everyone's benefit. This kind of abundant money would fund a reinvigorated, productive economy in which the savings of the people could fund honest loans of real, existing money. At its root, money is a means by which we exchange real value. Without real value in the world, money is nothing. As we have seen, it's the real world that makes the loan, not the bank. We, the people, in conjunction with the material blessings of the natural world, are the source of all real wealth. Therefore, money creation and its benefits belong to the public, not to private bankers. And what about interest? As we have seen, interest poses an arithmetic problem. And it's a problem that can only be solved in three ways. One, defaults and foreclosures to perpetual growth of the money supply, or the preferable and only other solution, 100% recycling of interest as spending. But such full recycling could only be accomplished by nationalizing the banking industry in the public interest. For example, interest earnings from public service banking could be paid to all as a citizen's dividend or it could be used to fund government in place of taxes, as was done successfully in colonial Pennsylvania. And that's just one instance of a society that organized its monetary system differently. There have always been alternatives, and there are alternatives now. What the evolution of money really teaches us is that the real measure of money's value is, very simple, its usefulness as money. And there are several different ways to create useful money. For instance, money can simply be an individual's private promise to pay, a pledge of one's own product or service, as in such community currencies as the let system or time dollars. Thousands of these community currencies already exist in circles of trust where members can be counted on to honor the credit they issue for themselves. And such community currencies can be a lifesaver in the event of a catastrophic collapse of the conventional banking system. When money shortages or hyperinflation disrupt trade and bring economic standstill, a working community currency can sustain a local economy. Are such proposals radical? You bet. But there are unprecedented challenges before us. No longer can exponential growth allow us to sustain a monumental debt that must ever increase to prevent the house of cards collapse of the whole system. Increasing wealth disparity, crushing debt, failing banks, and social and environmental catastrophes are what we face unless we radically change course. We must transform our monetary system to one that can adapt to a future we can now clearly foresee. To begin, we must examine monetary system designs that can deal with widespread economic shrinkage without inducing mass foreclosures and bankruptcies. 
But what can you do right now? Well, right now, there are people and organizations around the world that understand the problems and the injustice of today's monetary system. And you can join them in their effort to bring about the fundamental changes we need. It's time to talk to our friends. A financial crisis is the ultimate teachable moment. When bankrupt banks have to be bailed out by the governments the banks were formerly lending to, the contradictions, the fraud, and the fatal flaws of the current system are laid bare for all to see. But the solutions are there to see too if we look. We cannot afford business as usual. Making adjustments to the current system will not save us. The changes we need to make are radical and dedicated to the good of all, not the profit and control of a few. To make these changes, we must leave behind our outmoded assumptions and misplaced faith. We must face the challenge of a complete transformation. Reality calls.